Hi everybody, it's Mark again, and uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. I have a clock that a friend of mine gave me, and I'm, it, it's going to be a two-part video. And there's a reason why it's going to be a two-part video. Uh, I have to get... Uh, some information from my Black Forest uh, group expert, Valentin Weber, before I can finish the clock. Um, it's really a really different clock. I've never seen one quite like this one before. There is one um, similar to it, and we'll discuss that uh, in the video. But... Um, Anyway, I think that y'all are going to enjoy this video. Um, so kick back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab a cigarette, and let's learn things. This is a cute little clock. It's got some damage, of course, and it's missing some parts. Um, but... It was given to me for free. And, uh, I've never seen one like it before. And this is the reason why. Can you see the movement? There's this, uh, wire right here that the pendulum connects to. Get some, see if I can get some light in on the situation. The pendulum connects to this wire to uh, to make it tick. So we are going to take this thing apart and clean it and come up with a pendulum. And like I said, it's missing some stuff. And so um, you know, I'll have to worry about that later. But right now, I want to uh, get the clock ticking. And then I uh, get with my um, group expert who's my black horse group expert in my groups, Valentin Weber, and see if he can uh, come up with a picture and tell me what all this thing had. I've got some uh, parts. Looks like a little tree went here. I don't know. I'm... But I got some parts. Um that I got at the Dollar Tree here a while back that I just might put in here. After all, it's my clock. I can do what I want with this clock. But uh, I think it's kind of cute. These uh, chains serve no purpose. They're just there for um, decoration. So, let's get to it. First thing I need to do is take out these hands that look original. And some of these novelty clocks are extremely old. Um, I was working on a clock here a while back that I thought was rather new. Come to find out, they were made in the 30s. I don't want to break this hand off. There we go. It's a, uh, a square type hand. When you're working on something uh, this old, things can be brittle. But 
but we'll put that in the clock part. The uh, hardest part is going to get this movement out. Luckily, this one is screwed in. They're normally nailed in, but this one is screwed in. So, uh, there's four screws. Two on top and two on the bottom. So, I'm going to get my screwdriver out and take this movement out, and we'll get back to you. Okay, I got the movement out. The only markings I see on this thing says made in Germany right here. And somebody scratched BX right there. And the maker wouldn't have done that. But when I let go of this wire, watch what happens. Well, when I put it in the right position. It was ticking away. But this thing is uh, needing serviced. See, there it goes. Ticking away. And then it stopped. And I'm sure it has something to do with uh, it being extremely dirty. Um, needing serviced. So we're going to... We're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to, um, uh, take this thing apart and service it, clean it up. Um, zip ties are your friend. Make sure you use a big enough zip tie that will control everything. If you use a light zip tie, it will not control everything. And I already screwed up with this zip tie. I have more, but you do you see what I did? I didn't mean to go around this post. And I might be able to salvage this zip tie. I had a bug flying in my face, and I don't know whether or not that bug came off this movement or not. So let's try this again. I used to use wire to do all this, and wire works well, except for zip ties, to me, is easier to uh, manage. Unless you cut it off, like I did for this one. I'm just going to get it started. But I have to um, wind up the clock some more. So let me get a key. I got this metal box. I think I got it over in England. That's just where I store all my keys. Universal key that my daughter got me for uh, Father's Day, I believe. Um, with the uh, advice from a friend of mine who gave me this clock. Okay, so now... I, uh, I'm going to uh, wind this up and let down the spring. 
in the case in this in the zip tie there's a the click is right here so I should be able to do this on camera pushing the click out of the way and then slowly allowing the spring to let down in the zip tie. kind of hard to see all this because the gears in the way but this uh, click is controlled by this spring right here so what I'm going to do I'm going to see if I have a different key. That way I can put my universal letdown tool onto that key. Made this back in 1999. still use it I don't have a I I've never bought letdown keys because this works just fine so I'm going to move this spring out of the way or try to I really need another hand for this. And I don't want to damage these wires. A vice would come in handy right now. There we go. The clicks out of the way, so power is under control. It's all within the zip tie. So now I need to get out my sockets and take these nuts off. Here's a handy little kit that my son got me. I think he got it off a of wish. Or you can get them off a of wish. I use this thing all the time. So, um, I like using the uh, right tool for the job when I can. I got my ultrasonic cleaner heating up. Last nut and it'll all come apart. 
this thing is magnetized so that helps out that's nice that's what controls the pendulum and have you ever seen a uh, birch and crutch assembly that look like that? It still has some power left in it. As you can see, the uh, wheels were spinning. But... Taking this uh, rear plate off now. main wheel second wheel which is also the uh, um, I'm sorry this is not the second wheel this is the uh, um, minute arbor with uh, minute wheel second wheel escaping wheel so it's a 30 hour clock And here's the uh, click assembly. And like I said, this piece of brass metal that gets behind the click assembly to catch the teeth. this to come off I just gotta get it to so we're gonna scrub these up before I put them in my ultrasonic cleaner and then uh, clean them up and then we'll get back to you and this wheel don't typically come out. It's t typically pinged on. So I'm not going to take that wheel off. But I think this is really cool. Really cool design. Never seen one like it. But. With that said, everything has to be bent just right in order for it to work. The case is coming to pieces. And so I put super glue in there. And I got these, um, I actually got pendulum um, sticks in here. That way, uh, I don't have to put clamps all or, all along. On, on this side, I got toothpicks um, to help close up the, the case. And so, uh, I got to get out some more clamps to uh, squeeze the case together. Now, I've already I've taken the a zip tie off this spring and there's quite a bit of grease on this spring and brake clean it's a really good degreaser however if you're going to use brake clean you need to clean it off really well afterwards because if you don't the cleaner is going to continue cleaning whatever you're cleaning and it's going to eat away at your material so I live out in the country this is my house I do what I want
And then I have this uh, sponge here that I'm going to wipe the spring off with. And as you can see, it's already doing a, a good job. You need to check with your local environment agencies before you start using brake clean over the sink. Because they might not like it. Water getting a little bit too hot for me. So now I'm going to fill up the sink with some Dawn dish detergent water. And like I said, you have to clean off the brake clean. Or it's going to continue eating away at your material. I have used brake clean in a pinch to clean up a cuckoo clock movement. There's a YouTube video out there where this guy cleans his clock movements with brake clean. But he doesn't explain to you if you don't clean the brake clean off afterwards you wait a week two weeks come back to that movement and that movement is gonna be deteriorated because that brake clean continues to eat away at the parts so again in a pinch I have used brake clean I was at a friend's house, did have an ultrasound cleaner there. Triple rinsing this stuff off, you know. I want it off the parts. Denatured alcohol. And now I'm going to dry this off. And then I will come back and wipe it down with some oil. I've got it dried off. Now it's time to oil it. Dip in a Q-tip in your clock oil. You just uh, stick it in the spring and run it around. As the spring tightens up, it will oil more stuff. You don't have to oversaturate it. Okay, but now you ask, how are you going to wind that thing back up? And that's fairly simple also. And on a side note, you don't have to uh, throw away these zip ties. There's a piece that catches that zip tie. And you could stick a screwdriver or something in there and move it out of the way and then uh, pull it out. Like so. And that way you can use the zip tie again. So you ask, how do you wind this thing back up? Well, first of all, you have to put the spring on 
the post and put this uh, main gear in its slot and then you add the next gear which uh, When you when you get it all together, it'll match up. see it matches up and then you'd want to put a nut or two on for safety even though this is a 30 hour spring I left the thing apart in my hand it can hurt you if they break and they got sharp ends on them it can hurt you but it's a little baby spring it's It will hurt you. So put a couple of nuts on for safety reasons. And then what you're going to do, you're going to put something inside this main wheel here something that fits and then you wind up the spring and because you have that piece inside here it's preventing the main, uh, the uh, Mena Arbor center wheel from spinning. And so you can wind up the spring and make sure that the click is um, catching. And then just like before, you take your zip tie and you tie it down so you can take it back apart. And I'm not going to sit there and play with that click I'm just gonna tighten this thing down as tight as I can get it and then I'm going to remove this item that is catching that wheel and uh, the It came off the spring so you want to make sure that it is on the spring before you do the next step so now it's on the spring so now I'm going to remove this and this wheel is going to spin to allow the spring to unwind in my zip tie.
So keep your hands away from the gears. Or something like that will happen. It does it really fast. <laughs> is what I was getting at. No blood yet. So now I can um, remove the nuts and put the rest of the gears together. Because the spring is contained. And I don't like throwing anything away. You've seen this before. This is a... I put a deadbolt in my daughter's door. This is the piece of wood from where I used my tool to cut the hole. So this works perfect um, for putting these type of novelty clocks together. But before I put it together, I have to peg out the holes. Just like you do a, a regular clock, this novelty clock also needs the holes pegged out to make sure that the old dirt and oil and grime that the ultrasonic cleaner will not clean is out. You know, because that is the purpose of servicing a clock is to get the old oil out, fresh oil in. And the ultrasonic cleaner does not, will not, cannot do that in the hard to reach spots. And you see all that junk that's on the uh, plate still? So if you want your clock to run, you want to take these steps to uh, to get it to run. You see all that stuff that's on that toothpick? This is after the ultrasonic cleaner. In fact, I'm going to uh, take my wire brush to these plates because I think it would look better. There's junk right here. that the ultrasonic cleaner didn't clean off and my pre-washing didn't catch so i'm gonna take my uh dremel to these plates and clean them off better I have a brass brush. It wasn't made for a Dremel. And so it will make your Dremel get warm after prolonged use. Anyway, that's pretty loud, and I'm going to continue doing that off camera. So I cleaned them up, and I had to put a glove on because my thumb thumbprints were getting on the movement, and I didn't like that. 
And I've talked about this before. This is called pithwood. And it's, uh, it's used to clean parts. It's really soft wood. And what you do, you take a gear and you push it in there. And pull it out. And it cleans the gear up for you. And so, uh, it's fairly cheap to uh, to get, and you can stick this all over the place in this wood. Instead of taking a toothpick and running it up and down the gear. I've already cleaned these other ones. But I'm going to clean it with this pith wood. And these are really old parts. They haven't been cleaned in a while. But as you can see, that's a lot cleaner than what it was. This one needs some, uh, needs stuck in there a few more times. I want to see it's a little bit harder than uh, balsa wood. You can even put it in the ends if you want. Just um, be gentle. That way you don't bend the pivots. So anyway, we got the uh, minute wheel with center arbor in. The second wheel goes next. Again, I'm trying to do this on camera. I can't really see. Then the escapement wheel. Because I'm blind as a bat. Then the virgin crutch assembly, which I have to clean up still, because it's got junk on it. And I don't know if you can see this, but I just noticed it. This area right here is bent. I'm trying to do this on camera and show it to y'all. And so we'll see if I could do it through this magnifying glass. Hopefully you can see that, but this very tip is bent, so I'm going to have to uh, file that down, or the clock will have issues trying to run. So, I'm going to do that off camera, because I'm not going to be able to do it on camera. Because yeah, I need uh, all sets of eyes. It up so maybe you could see it better. It's this section right here, the very left side of it, this side over here. It's bent. 
up a little bit. Uh, hopefully you can see that. But anyway, I guess you just have to take my word for it if you can't see it. So I'm going to have to uh, file that off so it's even all the way across the plates together. Let's see if I can do this on camera. The um, birch and crutch assembly, we don't ne really need to worry about it because it goes in between this part right here. So, trying to put the great wheel in its slot. And the object here is to get all four nuts started once you get all four nuts started you're halfway home don't tighten them down just get them started Thirty-hour clocks are really, as far as the movement, are really simple and really easy to put together for the most part. The only thing difficult about this, and you saw how difficult it was, was the spring had to wind up the spring and it's not that difficult whatsoever so again the birch and crutch assembly is controlled by that spring wire so uh The minute arbor here, there we go. I was going to say the minute arbor with center wheel was stopping me from putting this plates down. But now all the gears are in. So I can uh, tighten up the great wheel area. I'm not going to force it. I'm just finger tight, I guess. And you can see the wheels are spinning away as they need to spin. And as you can see, the click is in its position. So now I need to take a toothpick to this hole. Now I need to clean this up. It's still got some smudge on it. So I'm going to take my wire brush, my brass wire brush to this and clean it up. Okay, I got the, uh, the wire cleaned up. So what I have to do is take off these nuts. And 
And I'm gonna go ahead and put another plastic glove on. I had to take my first one off because it ripped. And that's why I don't like wearing these things. So, anyway, um, the virgin crutch assembly goes on. This wire assembly goes on. And the birch and crutch assembly, the wire that's coming off the birch, which would be the crutch assembly, goes through this loop end of that wire. So, uh, to do that without bending stuff. I guess is going to be the issue here. And getting the burge to go into that little bitty hole. I think what I'm going to do is start one of these nuts, which will help me out. Now I can manipulate the uh, verge to go into the pivot hole which it just did so now I put the other nut on and tighten up the nuts all of them This thing um, is pinged in so you can adjust it up and down. And I wouldn't suggest adjusting it too much as things might go wrong. Finding my key. did with it I'm gonna go ahead and wind up the spring now but in doing so I'm taking my toothpick to lubricate the spring some more. Dipping my toothpick in my oil and sliding it across the spring. Now I could reuse this zip tie, but there ain't no sense in me using, reusing this zip tie. So, I'm just going to cut it off. 
and voila. So now, because it's um, because it's uh, wound up, I need to. Uh, I need to um, oil the pivots and then adjust adjust the um, verge and crutch assembly to get this thing in beat. It only just takes a minute drop of oil and a sharpened toothpick because it's made of wood will soak up the oil to allow you to drop it into the spot that you want to drop it into yes you could buy all these fancy clock oilers but if you remember a recent video when I was at my friend's house the clock oilers all they are is a smashed piece of wire so I've got plenty of wire around here and I have plenty of toothpicks so I don't need to buy all these fancy parts tools when what I have will work putting the cannon pinion and the hour wheel on so now after i close up my oil because i don't want oil all over my desk now it's time to put this thing in beat and figure out how i have to do that sorry um get it to tick and figure out how I do that. I'm going to take the can and pinion and our tube off for right now. I'm thinking the way you do that. is by adjusting this wire here I will figure it out. I don't like this stupid glove that I have on my hand. It's getting in my way. I think 
first thing I'm going to do is open up this wire some, just like I do on cuckoo clocks. I discovered the issue not shortly after I stopped this video. Just like on the warming clock, this section here is adjustable. And so the pallet, the entry and exit pallets were too close to each other. And as you can see now, it's ticking away. This is adjustable. And so it wasn't ticking because I had the pallets down too far. I don't believe this side over here is adjustable. I think it's just the left side. Sorry, the right side. Yeah, this side here isn't adjustable. It is the, the right side is the section that you adjust to get the... Uh, entry and exit pallets of the, of the birch assembly just right. As you can see, the birch um, escaping wheel is turning. The crutch assembly, which is this section right here, coming out all this is a crutch assembly this piece of wire coming out getting a hold of this piece of wire and right here's the 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 foot of the section that's all the crutch assembly and so uh, when adjusted just right it ticks away as you could see. I keep saying as you could see and I got the stupid camera in the wrong spot but as you could see it's ticking away right there it's pretty cool little movement I just wish the uh, housing wasn't so damaged. This reminds me of another clock, and I've got one on order. It's where the the boy is on one side of the clock, and the girl is on the other side of the clock. And they swing back and forth to um, to be the pendulum. And I just bought one, and I'm waiting for it to come in. Um, last time I bought a clock from them, they I bought several, and um, it's around Christmas time. They were giving out good prices, and. Uh, one I pay like eight dollars for and never did show up. Well, I got like eighty dollars in this clock and it better show up or I'm gonna be mad. So, but anyway, it's a pretty cool movement. Have you all ever seen one like this before? I have to come up with the pendulum, but that could be just a girl or a boy 
because it's swinging. So uh, it, you could stick a rock on there for all I it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'm going to send pictures to uh, my group expert and see what he says about this clock, what time it was made, stuff like that. I pushed it down too far. I need to push it back up some. The reason I discovered this, I should have been paying attention when I took the thing apart, is I was sitting here going like this, and the escapement wheel wasn't moving, and that's when I noticed this was adjustable. Anyway, it's a pretty cool movement. This is clock it reminds me of. There's a little boy and a little girl that makes the, the pendulum. And as you can see, it is rocking back and forth to allow the little boy and little girl to uh, make the pendulum. And... Uh, uh, the clock that I have on order is missing some parts, but these things run of around $300, $350 in working order, and they're extremely hard to find. The, I've seen the movement alone cost like $150, $160 on eBay a while back, so... I think it's made by the same maker. Uh, the style clock, the movement looks very similar to this clock. This clock uh, belongs to a friend of mine, Tyler Vivers. And when he Post is, well, the swinging dolls clock is up and running. Pop six bushings into the movement. Nice, clean spring and a wee bit of oiling. Um, I have some around here somewhere. Then it's going on the wall next to its other dual pendulum mate. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there's a name on the maker uh, standby. Here's my clock that I have on order. The name is right there. Uh, I can't read it sideways, so stand by. I'll let you read it. Carl Scher, I can't pronounce it that well, but anyway, it's, uh, like I said, the movements alone are very valuable, and so I think I could take the, the bouncing girl clock and make her into the pendulum on both sides. And like I said, this movement is very similar to that movement. So I think it's made by the same company myself.
anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, uh, please leave me some comments. Like I said, it has to be a two-part video because I have to figure out what it's supposed to look like. Whether it's supposed to have a little boy um, swinging, whether it's a little girl swinging, whether it's, um, I don't know, a boat swinging. Uh, so I'm going to get um, uh, some information from my Black Porous group expert, Valentin Weber. I still think the clock is made by the Albert Carl's Rue or however you pronounce it, because it's the same ideal, it's the same concept, it's the same type of system as the, the clock I showed you that Tyler Beavers has, a few of them, and I have one on order, and I'm hoping to get it um, uh, this week. So uh, stay tuned for part two of this video, and Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, uh, the like button, the notification button, and leave me comments. And may God bless each and every one of you.